Hi, and welcome to our fifth and final report in the Dashboard for Distribution series. We're going to build a table in Excel, and this table is going to help us manage which of our POs have been approved and which ones haven't been approved. And we can tell by looking at this list, all, these are all our open POs. We can see who approved them, if they're approved, and we can see the dollar value of them, which will help us evaluate uh, if we can approve them or not. Now this is going to be done in a two-part step. The first part is going to be building the view in SQL. If you are not a SQL person and you or you have never worked in SQL before, I do encourage you to enlist the help of someone who is familiar with SQL. Uh, get your IT department, someone who knows SQL there, or get your partner. It's just this one step that you'll need the help for, and then you could do the Excel part on your own from thereafter. Uh, if you get into your SQL database and you make a mistake with it, you could run the risk of corrupting your data. Um, so I, I don't want that to happen to you, so I do encourage you strongly to enlist some, uh, some help there if you need it. Okay, so let's get started by um, creating our Excel view, or our view in SQL. That's what we're going to hit off of. So I'm in SQL Server Management Studio, and I'm in databases. I'm going to work in the database 2 Inc. And so on view, I'll just right click and create new view. Now, I'm going to click Cancel here, or Close, because um, I've already outlined my view, and I'll share the completed view with you when we're done, but I want you to understand what it is that I'm doing. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm defining the PO status. Now, in the SQL database, the status will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. Well, I want it to say new if it's new, which means 1, released if it's 2, change order 3, and so on. So I have those set. I also have the type of purchase order it is. In the database, it'll just say 1, 2, 3, or 4. So I want it to say standard if it's a 1, dropship if it's a 2, and so on. Further down, if the PO is on hold, I want it to say on hold or be blank if it's not on hold. And then finally, on the approval process, if it is approved, I want it to say approved, otherwise I want it to say pending. So I'm going to just copy all the starter work I did, and I'll paste it in here, and I'll refresh. And you can see my data is starting to populate down at the bottom, and I have all of my views structured. Well, we also wanted the ability to drill back into GP. So if I see a line that I can approve, I can double click on it and it'll open it up in GP if I am already logged into GP. So GP has to be on my workstation and it has to be, I have to be actively logged into it, but it will automatically open it up in the window so I don't have to go back and then manually open it. So to do that, I'm going to need to connect to a view that already exists, and this is the view that is used in SmartList for um, purchase orders in general. So what I'm going to do, first of all, let's just make that a little bit longer. I'll right mouse click up here, I'll click on Add Table, and then I'll click on View, and I'm going to find the Purchase Order Table. There it is, and then I'll click on Add and then close. So now I need to create the relationship and it will be PO number to PO number because GP will only let me have one PO number. I know it's that um, there will always be a direct one-to-one -one combination. So the one PO number will only exist in one place. And now what I can do is scroll to the bottom of this list and at the very bottom I can see my drill back commands. So I'm looking for the drill back for the purchase order number. And then if I scroll down, I'll see all of that um, column information right there. And I can give it an alias if I want, but I'll, leave, I'll just go ahead and leave it just as it is. So this information I will have available to you at um, uh, on the bottom of this blog posting here or this web page. So what I want to do is just save it, so I'll just click on the little save icon and I'm going to create this view. It is a very good policy 
to name all of your views with the word view first or the name of your company. This way you'll be able to distinguish all of your custom views as opposed to the ones that are in GP natively nor will GP end up overriding your views. So it's a very good policy to put view first. So I'll say, say uh, view, PO, um, let's call it open underscore POs. And then we'll click OK. So that's the name of our view, um, view open POs. So now what I'm going to do is go to Excel. So let me launch Excel. All right, so I will click on data on my menu bar and then I'm going to choose from other data boy, uh, sources on my ribbon and from data connection wizard. So I'm going to create my own data connection. Uh, the first thing it'll ask me uh, is, you know, where do you want to get it from or where do you want to connect to? I want to connect to SQL Server, so I'll click next. I'll enter in my server name and then I'm going to key in my SA password. Now when you create the view in your system you will need to grant access to the dying group. Um, that's very important so that you can give access to uh, to it for people which is another reason why you definitely need uh, to be familiar with SQL to do that. So I'll click on next. The database that I'm interested in is my two database and now all the views will display at the top and then my table. So don't scroll all the way to the bottom because it looks like they're in alphabetical order. They are in alphabetical order, but it shows views first and then tables. So we want to find that sweet spot um, right before the A's and the tables start. So here we go. And here is our view. View open POs. I'll click on next and finish. And now it asks me how do I want to see it. Now I want, all I'm going to do is use this, my, is a table. My dashboard will be an Excel table. And dashboards do not always have to be chart. They have to be what's easy for you to look at, disseminate the information, and be able to use it. So I'm going to just put it in a table and I will make it easy to use because we're going to clean a lot of this information up. So now that this is done, we're actually in part two now, and part two is, let's get this up, building the table in Excel. So now this is actually where we are now. So let's get started on this process. Um, so what I'm going to do is I want to create a column for my drill back. So I'm going to just insert a new column B. And when I refresh this incidentally, this column B will stay the same. So I'm going to call this PO in GP. And now I'm going to create a link that uses this PO number and this drill back code that we've created. So what I'm going to do is the um, Excel command for hyperlink. So I'm going to insert a formula. It's under lookup and reference and hyperlink. And then I'll get my function argument. So what is the link location? And I'll just click in that first line. Um, and it will reference the whole column, PO for drill back, and the friendly name will be this purchase order. So it's going to show this PO number, but it's going to use this drill back. And I'll click OK, and now you can see my PO number has that look like it's a hyperlink to it. So then what I could do is hide the two columns that I used in the formula. And I'll just highlight them, right mouse click, and choose hide. So now I have my PO for drill back, and all of the other information. So I'll just click on my first PO and I'll just get this uh, security message. I'll click OK and what you didn't see pull happen was it automatically pulled up that same PO number 9997. So I'll close that out again and just to prove that it's working we'll open up the next one 90999 and it just minimized it. There it is, 0999. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So now we want to do a little bit of cleanup to make this easier for us to manage information. Um, the first thing we want to do is move it. So I'm going to just highlight the pivot table because I want to put my logo on it. I'll just insert some blank rows at the top and it'll move my table down. And now I can insert my logo. So I'll click on insert and then pictures and now there's my logo. 
So now what I want to do is change the color to match my logo. So I'll just click on my table. Under Table Tools, I'll click on the Design, and on my Design ribbon, I'll just select a color scheme that matches. Okay, so now what I want to do is I, if it's pending, I want it to show up in a different color so the ones that are pending stand out a little more because those are the ones that need to be have attention paid on it. So I'm just going to highlight this row, come up to Home, and then I'm going to do Conditional Formatting, and I'm going to create a rule. So I want to create a new rule, Format Only Cells That Contain, if the cell value is equal to pending, then I want to format it with a color. And the format will be with a background of, oops, we want to fill, with a background of like the, uh, some kind of orange color, and we'll click OK. And now you can see all my pending ones are orange. Now what you may want to do also then is uh, cr up here, cr create um, a legend, if you will, pending approval. And on this one, we may want to also come through and format the background of this one the same color. And then this way, it tells us instantly from looking at it, if it's this, it's pending. So what we also may want to do is format that at bold. And then this whole column, we can come back in and make that conditional formatting as bold as well. So we can manage that rule. Okay, so we have it set um, set to orange. So that's cool. We'll go back to format. We'll go to font, and we'll also say it's bold, and maybe even italicize. And now you could see it does indeed change that. So let's make this one, we've already got a bold, let's make it italicized as well. So that stands out a little bit better. Okay, so let's highlight this whole column. We'll do conditional formatting and create another new rule. And we're going to choose, um, again, um, the format only cells that contain. But this time we're going to take the cell value and instead of doing between, we're going to do is greater than, and then we'll actually enter the value in of 1999.99, and then we'll format, the font will be bold and italic, and we'll fill it with green. And then OK, OK, and now you can see those are green. So here, we might want to say um, over 2000, and again, then we would want to do the same formatting that we use so that our key will actually look the same or our legend will look the same. And so now as we look at this report, it's easy to see which items need attention paid to them. We could look at the pending, we could look at it by dollar value, and we can drill back into GP. Now again, this is a dashboard. Even though it is very job specific, it's very operational specific, but it does draw attention to which items we need or which POs we need that actively have something that needs to be done with them. Hope this helps. Thanks.